How many times have you caught yourself being distracted by content on social media instead of doing your homework? Whether it's scrolling through memes or chatting with friends, people enjoy social media. Social media has been revolutionizing the way we communicate for years now. No longer is it a niche corner of the web reserved for early adapters and meme enthusiasts. As of current, 81% of Americans have had a social media profile. Naturally then, it has also become one of the public's favorite forms for engaging in government and public issues. That's why huge commotion occurred when Russian groups linked to Kremlin spent over $50,000 on political ads. Russians bought ads from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, some of the most widely used social media platforms. Their goal was to sway the 2016 U.S. election, as well as amplify political discord and fuel an atmosphere of incivility and chaos. These ads range from anti-Clinton, anti-LGBT, gun control matters, and other degrading messages. Seen by over 10 million people, these ads rehash the debate of whether or not the government should regulate content on social media at all. Content on the internet shouldn't be monitored because that would be infringing on U.S. rights to privacy and free speech and press, which could lead to abuse of power. The First Amendment of the Constitution states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of freedom of speech or of the press. Whether or not the messages are positive, releasing ads that express political opinions is exercising freedom of speech. Adam Schwartz, senior staff senator of Electronic Frontier Foundation says, it's a real disservice to freedom of expression on the internet, and it's an impoverishment of the national conversation when millions of people with a unique perspective are deterred from participating in social media discourse. People are allowed to have opinions as well as refute others' opinions. Some would argue that the government monitoring Russian bot content would benefit the people, and I don't disagree. However, the ads didn't physically harm anyone, and there's no guarantee that the attempt to sway the election actually had any influence on the votes. Monitoring content on social media not only infringes upon our rights, but also can lead to the government abusing its power. There are numerous examples of tyrants and groups of leaders in history that have monitored what had been written about the government. One example is the Sedition Act of 1918, which made it a crime to willfully utter, print, write, or publish any disloyal, profane, scurrilous, or abusive language about the form of government of the United States. It was eventually repealed because it challenged the Bill of Rights. The repeal of this act redefined freedom of speech and press. Another example involves the Tiananmen Square Massacre. In 1989, Chinese troops stormed through Tiananmen Square in the center of Beijing, killing and arresting thousands of pro-democracy protesters. The Chinese firewall hid all information regarding the Tiananmen Square Massacre from their internet. These are clear red flags of oppressive behavior. Yes, not all forms of government will abuse power. However, monitoring content is still limiting citizens' freedom of speech and press, even though it was meant to protect the people. The U.S. government has even recently begun monitoring the social media content of immigrants to quote-unquote protect the homeland. This violates a person's right to privacy, according to the Fourth Amendment. We need to remember our rights to free speech, press, and privacy that the government shouldn't be able to monitor or limit. Without these restrictions, we could have more freedom to learn, create, understand, and be more involved with our world. So I encourage you to voice your opinion and get involved with discussions and matters that, well, matter.